Hello everybody and once again welcome back to the Global Business Update with TA. Well, the Italians seem to be going nuts or hazelnuts, that's right, with uh, Ferrero Roaches, the famous uh, chocolate company in Italy, focusing on obtaining their hazelnut supplies more from Italy rather than from Turkey. Mind you, Turkey is the largest hazelnut uh, grower followed by Italy and as that happens, many farmers in Italy seem to be uh, getting into cultivation of hazelnut which is creating some environmental concerns because not all the areas would have the right conditions to grow it and this is as the fear goes among many people leading to some environmental concerns as well looks like Ferrero's got some very not so tasty environmental problems to solve there meanwhile IKEA is running out of items that's right as a part of the current supply chain crunch around the world, it seems that 10% of IKEA items, the famed uh, Swedish furniture and home goods company, is not available for purchasing. And due to some of these supply chain concerns, they are also looking at setting up new warehouses in countries such as China, Vietnam and even Thailand. Let's go on to see how that works out for them. And on a similar tone, we see that the global shipping firms are in fact having the time of their life. The cost of sending goods from Asia to Europe is more than 500% compared to last year. It's right now to send one unit of cargo to another two from Asia to Europe. It's going to cost you more than $14,000. How about that? As a result, we are seeing that the earnings of the shipping companies are at an all time high. In fact, beating the previous highs of the 2008. Now in 2008, although it was at a quite a high rate, the global financial crisis brought those prices and the earnings crumbling down. This time, however, they are experiencing it thanks to the combined factors of a global economic recovery and at the same time, the current supply chain bottlenecks. Now this does not seem to be diminishing anytime soon. So it could be that especially for shipping companies, the party is still not. However, small catch though, while from the large vessels to the smaller specialized vessels are enjoying this, some of the oil tankers are yet to cash in on this situation. Southeast Asian economies are having to make a choice between life and livelihood. Repeated waves of the pandemic and the unceasing amount of cases that are spiraling across Southeast Asian economies is stubbornly refusing to go away and as a result the governments are being pressurized uh, against opening up the economy versus keeping it in lockdown. Mind you, at a, at a time that the world death rate is around 0.2%, most of the Southeast Asian economies are really struggling with extremely high death rates. In fact, uh, some of the countries like Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Vietnam, they have all recorded a rate much higher than the world average of 0.2%. And as a result, they are struggling to make the choice between opening up as well as the lockdowns. Now keep in mind, in the initial rounds of the pandemic, they were able to have lockdowns, they had money to spend, but repeated stimulus being given has really caused uh, these governments to go into a cash crunch. And now they are trying out various dynamics of how can we open up restaurants, how can we have the public spaces open, how can public transport be open. For example, some places are saying you can have the restaurants open, but uh, it has to be uh, outdoors and not indoors. So many different models are being worked out as they try to get the modus operandi right in the new normal where a pandemic and a few clusters appearing now and then might just be the way of life into the future. There's always complaints about too much greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide especially being out there. Well, looks like Kleinworks is actually doing something about it. The Swedish uh, sustainability solutions company Kleinwerk is actually has started operating the world's very first direct carbon capturing project in Iceland. A new project is set to capture more than 4,000 tons of CO2 directly from the environment per year. And the idea is to capture this CO2 and infuse it right into the ground where it will stay in for thousands of years, in fact, turning into various rocks and stones. Looks like there is finally a solution for the excess of the carbon dioxide is out there, how sustainable it, it's going to be and how uh, pragmatic it will be beyond just uh, a, a test project or a pilot project though is yet to be seen. Guinea has been making news rounds in multiple business forums and political circles, especially after a military coup 
uh, rendered the incumbent government as no longer in power and in fact it's a new military leader and his team that is ruling it as a result the aluminium prices have had have hit an all-time high especially because guinea is the country with the biggest deposits of bauxite with over 40 billion uh, tons of deposits with them and bauxite is the main ore that is used in aluminium production and at a time that once again as i said the world is just experiencing somewhat of a recovery from the cruel pandemic and the economic wars is this the worst time to be experiencing aluminium price to be high well your guess is as good as mine and finally the bts craze in india is leading to a new type of food which is korean noodles korean noodles despite the pandemic korean noodles imports into india has hit a 182 percent increase uh, last year despite the pandemic being there and this is driven by the extreme demand for Korean pop, Korean drama, and Korean celebrity-based uh, lifestyles among the Indian population. In fact, even on their streaming platforms, it seems to be extremely popular. And going to a new extreme, fans of India across various cities have been uh, renting out various billboards and putting birthday wishes for some of the celebrity stars of the famous K-pop band, BTS. That's it for this week. No matter what business you may be in, have a profitable tune playing in your background in the coming week.